Hey, hey, Frank here. Welcome to Springer's Adventures. So, uh, next part of our journey here on the shovel head is going to be the brakes. Um, the bike had been sitting for quite some time, got a lot of moisture. Uh, brakes got kind of contaminated with the fluid and stuff. So, going to start shoot through the process of what you could look for if you had a, a motorcycle sitting for a while. And the same even goes through if you have a car that's been sitting for a long time. Uh, brake fluid can become contaminated anything. Car, trailer, motorcycle, it doesn't matter. It all can happen. Um, I went from the front brakes to the back brakes. I didn't get all the footage on the front brakes because uh, I got done with the front brakes, started going to the back brakes, ran into a little hiccup with the exhaust coming off there, so I got sidetracked on that. Somehow I lost some of the footage there redoing the front brakes. But uh, I think you can pretty much get the gist of it. You'll see what the brake fluid looks like. You'll see how the process of going through and cleaning this all out. I hope this helps. Uh, so. Follow along and uh, come check this out. And hey, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and uh, hit that notification bell as well. So, hey, let's go through these brakes. So, uh, to take off your front master cylinder, uh, really, really simple. I won't go through everything there, but you got four screws. You got your two screws on top there for your cap. And as you come around here, you have your brake line, which goes into your fitting right there. Uh, you know, the old shovel heads and stuff like that back, they didn't have banjo fittings back then, so this was like a straight flare, just like you used to find on a lot of automotive stuff. So anyways, four screws on there, two caps, two screws on there, take the cap off, just pulls right apart, pop that pin out, and your rod here just pulls right out there, and you can disassemble it. So let's get this thing off. So as you can tell, moisture really got into the master cylinder on this one. Uh, so we went ahead and undid them screws, like I said, popped that thing off, took it apart. This is the inside of that master cylinder. Like I said, it just got completely corroded. Here's the rebuild kit that we got for it, and it's pretty much just straightforward. Now, like I said, I didn't get a chance to, uh, well, I did actually video it, but somehow I lost it uh, while I was taking apart the exhaust there when I kind of got sidetracked. So uh, like I said, just refer to your manual. Uh, it comes apart and goes together real easily. Uh, just clean the bore out really good and uh, maybe take some emery cloth if you have to just to clean it out real good. So once I popped the line off of the uh, front caliper, you can see the same junk that was inside the mass cylinder was also down inside the uh, calipers as well. So basically the same process, take it all apart there and just clean it all out. You can tell that brown is like when water just infiltrates it and just gets nasty as all. So take some brake cleaner to it, clean it all apart. Here's the uh, new seal kit for it. Just goes right back together the same way you had it there and uh, put it back together. All right, so let's head to the caliper on the back. You actually take the caliper off of the rotor, comes apart in two pieces. There's about four bolts and uh, just pull the front and back half off there. I always like to put air in the, either the bleeder valve or where the hose goes in there and just to go ahead and put some air to it and it'll blow the piston out. And you can see the junk that came out of that one. Not nearly as bad as the front brakes. The back brakes were actually working on the bike. Uh, but still definitely uh, had some contamination in it. So uh, time to clean it out. Here's the uh, seal kit for the back. Uh, very simple little seal kit. You can tell by looking at these brake pads. They were like brand new uh, there. So here's the uh, master cylinder. The master cylinder was in actually very nice shape. I took it apart, cleaned it real good, cleaned it inside and outside, gave it a coat of paint, let it dry out in the sun real good there. So make it look nice and nice and clean, ready to go. Uh, here's the rebuild kit for the master cylinder uh, got from the local JP, I think, or Dennis Kirk, uh, somebody like that. But again, that's the original uh, Wagner uh, Lockheed one there. Here's the uh, owner's, the owner's manual. Here's the assembly manual. Uh, always refer to the assembly manual if you can't remember how to put something back together there. So uh, here it is laying there on the cloth with the new parts. I believe the uh, old parts are here on the bottom. The new parts are there on the top. Uh, pretty similar. There was a couple little parts at the very top of, on that red rag there. They were not used. They were for a different year. The boot was a lot different. Uh, it was uh, not nearly as thick. Uh, the original boot did have a crack in it, so I mean, did need the new one there. But the hole for the uh, rod to go through there was extremely small. Uh, like I said, it was a big difference on that. But other than that, it was all pretty much the same. So you're going to place the spring in first. Uh, followed by this little rubber cup. I had it soaking in some brake fluid uh, so it slide in there easy. Fits over top of that there. And you just go ahead and push that down in there oh so gently. Try to keep it square as you're pushing it back down in there. Okay. 
I usually just take my finger. You don't want to use, use a screwdriver or anything like that. You don't want to put a hole in that and have fluid coming back through there. So just push it down. The spring's going to give you some resistance, but you can get it down in there uh, part of the way. The next thing is uh, your piston. There again, I let the piston, there's an O-ring on the one side there, soak in some of the brake fluid so you can put it in there. Goes in that way, goes the O-ring is the last part to fit in there. You can see that hole because that's where your rod's going to go uh, and push against that. That's basically your piston plunger. Uh, whatever you want to call it to it. But now at this point you can see you almost need like two hands because there is some resistance trying to push it down in there. Uh, so at that point either you have an extra person or something <laughs> or you're going to shut the camera off here. But uh, you need to push it down in there. That little washer right there is going to go on top and pushes down in there as well. There's a little groove in there and then that retaining clip as you can see boom fits down in there. But uh, you could do it one person. An extra hand is handy but uh, you can do it by yourself. So there it is, all together, ready to you go and put back on the bike at this point. So just so you know what it looks like, this is it, it all together there. Got the little boot on there. There's your uh, push rod. Basically, it comes off of your brake pedal and pushes into the thing there, so you're all good to go. I got the cap back on there, so hey, man, it's looking really good. Ready to bolt this sucker on there. So I did have one thing, though, I'm going to show you here in a second. All right, the filler cap there, when you took it off, did not have any gasket or O-ring or anything on there. Not quite sure if it needed one at this point. Uh, I do believe it does when I looked further on there, but I didn't have one. Uh, I called around at a local dealership. Of course, they don't have any parts for a shovel head, but hey, you never know. Sometimes they may have something laying around, but uh, didn't have anything. So I ran down to Ace Hardware, brought the cap with me, and I found this little uh, rubber gasket here. And uh, it's a little probably thicker than it needed to be, but... Uh, until I get the correct one, I figured, hey, it'll keep the moisture out, keep the trash out, and it'll keep it sealed down on tight. And it was like 39 cents, so how could I go wrong with that? I figured to get it something on there and keep it from contaminated while I get the fluid in there, that would work just fine. Gotta love Ace Hardware sometimes. All right, let's get this thing on the bike. All right, pretty straightforward bolt in the back on. You got two long bolts. You got two spacers to go behind it. It bolts right directly to the frame there. Uh, don't forget you have to screw in your... Uh, your line right there and go in there uh, you get it. so we got it in there but just go ahead and put those two tighten it down uh, your rod goes back in uh, the small end obviously goes into the plunger in there and that fits right underneath there you got a little pin that goes through there and it's a little tedious trying to get that through there but uh, get it through there has a little cotter key locks it in play and boom you got the rear brake on there and it works yay all right let's go to the rear brake shoes now now it's just the reverse of putting these calipers back on the rotor than how you took them off there. You're going to go ahead and put your pins in there, your brake pads, going to go on your pin, you put your backside on, uh, you got your locating pin there, you're just going to take your other caliper and put it up against it. Don't forget to put your line on there first and screw that on, uh, unless you disconnect it from back at the uh, brake switch box, you'll have to screw that on there because it's a little pain there and it has a little clip underneath your uh, swing arm there. It keeps it out of the way as well. It's like a little C-clip that holds it up underneath there. So uh, go ahead and screw your line on. Go ahead and pick your caliber back up and uh, stick it up on the rotor. Locate it. Uh, sometimes some pads are a little funny getting underneath there. You may have to get underneath there with a little screwdriver or something sometimes to help locate them. But just go ahead, put your other pad on there. They go on the pin. You can see, like I said, a little screwdriver. Sometimes they fall around. You just got to get under there and give a little jiggle get it back into place, but uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, tighten all your bolts down and uh, you, boom, you got your rear caliper back on your rotor. So at this point, uh, you're ready to go. All right, so we got this one all back together and on here. The only thing I always wanna point out is this here screws directly into that. Unless you unscrew it from back at the master cylinder or back actually the proportioning, not the proportioning valve, I think it's your light switch uh, valve that's back there you're going to have a hard time because it screws directly into that. I knew that taking that apart and I forgot and I put it all back together. I should have redid that with a uh, swivel connection or something which would make it a lot easier or put another block down here somewhere. Uh, but it goes through. You have right where my finger is pointing down there. It has a little uh, bracket, a little clamp that holds that on there as well. But uh, there she is all back on there and uh, we're just going ahead and bleed that. And looks like we have new brakes on the back. All right, well, the 
Brakes have been bled, and uh, hey, we're good to go. Went out for a little ride, and uh, it all worked out pretty good. It's nice to be able to hit the front and back brakes and have brakes when you need to, so <laughs> that's a good thing. So, hey, if you're out there and you want to do your own brakes, uh, it's not that difficult of a job at all. Uh, if you have your uh, factory manual, it pretty much shows you how to redo the uh, master cylinders and the brakes, stuff like that. So uh, I wouldn't be afraid to give it a shot if, you, if you'd if you like to. The parts are out there pretty readily available. Your rebuild kits for your calipers, the rebuild kits for the master cylinders. Uh, most of your major uh, suppliers have them out there. The brake lines, eh, hit and miss on that one. You may have to have some custom steel braided ones made or something like that because they're getting a little uh, tough to find. But uh, you shouldn't have a problem going through there. If you have any questions at all, uh, drop a comment below. I'm sure I missed a couple spots in between. I know I didn't miss as far as rebuilding the front master cylinder, and I apologize on that one. But uh, anyways, give it a shot. You know what to look for. If your brake fluid starts looking nasty like that, by all means, uh, you know, clean it out and redo it before you run into problems or you're running down the road and don't have any brakes at all. So, hey, thanks again for watching. Uh, don't forget, give me a thumbs up and subscribe as always. And, uh, hey, we may just see you out there on the road. See ya.